Quinton, so you are a creative, a very creative individual um, and you're currently working on a few different projects. Um, let's begin with styling. Um, talk to us a bit about that. Um, styling started it all. Uh, that's how I got going uh, seven years ago now. It's kind of kind of long. Yeah. I don't realize <laughs> it sometimes. Um, but that's how I got into the business. Uh, Self-talk, kind of just found my way, mm -hmm. just learned my way through it. Um, starting to filter away from it a little bit. Okay. I still do dabble. Yeah. Um, still do I'm shooting the rest of this week. So I still do do a lot of shoots, but it's more so just personal things yeah. or if like someone like friends of mine pop up and they're like, I have a gig for you. Mm -hmm. um, mainly do celebrity. Uh, so you know, there's some athletes, uh, musicians are mainly my niche mm -hmm. that I stick mm -hmm. to. Um, don't do too much editorial just okay. because I don't like the rat race. And, right. Like, they am paid and like, I don't yeah. have time to pitch. Mm -hmm. It's just it's redundant to me. Um, but it's been good. It's been good. I'm, I'm thankful for it. It's mm -hmm. opened up doors. It's, it's brought me here. Um, been away for the last nine months, so I've just gotten back. Uh, I've only been back in the UK for two two months. Oh, wow. So okay. haven't picked up any new clients as yeah. far as things like that go. I'm just kind of been getting myself back adjusted and doing what I kind of want to do right now. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm kind of phasing, like I said, to more directing. That's really okay. my end goal. Yeah. That's what I want to be doing when it's all said and done. Mm -hmm. um, be it film, music videos. I have a video coming out next Monday. Okay. Back. So that'll be my third one that wow. I have. So yeah. pretty excited about that. Um, and then that's just, and I also run a London-based streetwear brand. Uh, okay. So I create and direct that. Um, on everything from top to bottom yeah. as far as the creative side of things. Mm -hmm. So right now my plate's pretty busy. Yeah, it sounds so. I like to be busy. Yeah, so busy is always good. Yeah, <laughs> you can be idle and broke or busy. Or That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so just going back to um, fashion and styling and where it all started, when did you know that that was going to be the thing that kind of took you or brought you to where you are now? Mm -hmm. I really, I really don't know when it hit me. Okay. Um, I was played college football, so mm -hmm. I was in school, and I really wanted to be a law, uh, be a sports agent afterwards. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to go to law school, uh, intern with a law office. Found the people very pleasant. They were very respected people, um, very successful, but I didn't find them very happy. Mm -hmm. uh, deep down, their kids, they were divorced, they yeah. were alcoholics, a lot of things that I didn't want to be. Uh -huh. um, I just realized I was really chasing the money. Right. Um, so a friend of mine, uh, her fiance at the time, was an NFL player. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he always used to rave about my outfits yeah. like when I would see him. And I'd be like, you don't understand that I thrifted this shirt. And wow, like, yeah. My my whole outfit probably costs as much as your jeans. Yeah. <laughs> but that, that really put in perspective for me that I that fashion was something I was good at. Yeah. Um, I always realized it growing up. Mm -hmm. I was always wanting shoes. I never wanted clothes. I mean, I never wanted toys growing up. Yeah. I always wanted shoes. That was my thing. Uh, I was never I had a toy every week. I got a new pair of J's. That was my right, thing. Right. Um, so I always knew that I liked fashion, but mm -hmm. I never knew that I could make a career out of it. Okay. So um, 2011, when I started working with him, was the, the breakthrough into like, okay, you can actually make money and actually make a career out of this yeah. and enjoy it. If there was another sort of role or position you could have, you could have started off in fashion, what would it have been? What do you think styling is? I think styling is probably where, where, yeah. I, where I best suited. Um, I did, I was a head visual at H&M okay. in 2013 for mm -hmm. a while. And I, I did like the visual uh, merchandising yeah. aspect. I didn't so much like retail. Okay. So that's kind of like, I kind of like to be able to do my own thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not much of like a boss person. I right. like to be my own boss. Mm -hmm. um, I'd rather work with you than for you. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, I think styling's been the best way for me to kind of make my own way and do what I want to do. Okay. Um, and you also mentioned about the brand that you created by Direct at the moment. How did you um, connect with the brand? How did you get the position that you have? Well, I actually um, had met them a year prior to even working with them okay. um, at Jacket Required, which is mm -hmm. a trade show here in London. Um, and I hadn't used them for anything. Right. I couldn't. I was waiting on the right time to use them. And then uh, we were doing uh, Denea's uh, right. BBC Live Extra show. Okay. So I reached out to him for 
actually this jacket that I have on right uh-huh. now, same jacket. Yeah. And um, they were like, yeah, absolutely. And so then about a couple weeks later, they were like, can when you do our new lookbook, we're rebranding, we've been around for X, Y, Z, and we want to take it to another level, and we really think that you can help us. So um, the combination of me and the photographer, we came up with a concept, we styled, we picked everything as far as casting, you know, yeah. things. And then um, I ended up going home like two weeks later to go okay. get my visa and everything yeah. sorted out. So um, I realized that every week they were calling me, right. if not every day, wow. asking me for direction. And I was like, well, I'm a remote, but I think that I can still help you. Yeah. Um, and so then they brought me on as creative director. Wow. Just been doing that for almost a year now. Fantastic. So it's really that passion and that for that passion that's kind of opened that door and kind of got you there. I think you just have to really just put out good work. Mm. If people can trust you and you're putting out a good quality piece of work, like I think that just speaks for itself yeah. uh, a lot of times. Uh, if you look at their content prior to me coming in, it wasn't up to par. Okay. It, wasn't, it wasn't anything that I would put out. Yeah. And I think that's what really impressed them is that I could bring in a team. I could pick a photographer, mm-hmm. makeup, uh, models, do everything from top to bottom mm-hmm. and really have some direction behind it yeah. rather than just shoot. Okay. Because I think a lot of times people just do things yeah. without much direction mm-hmm. behind what they're doing and it doesn't really translate with the audience. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's really what stood out to them. It's like I could come in and actually handle a show and I am I would say I'm a people's boss. Like I don't yeah. really, I'm not, I'm not rushed, like I'm not forceful I'm very I'm very cool and laid back mm-hmm. so like I can come in and be in a stressful situation you never know I'm stressed right. just because I'm always calm under pressure and I think that puts people at ease when they know mm-hmm. they can trust you they know that you're going to deliver on time and you're going to deliver a superior product like yeah. that's I think that's where you really win people over you can talk all day of course. but that doesn't really do too much yeah it goes on application. it's about those results yeah um, now you mentioned about film and directing uh, and wanting to move into that um, and you said you've got some videos coming out so how has fashion led you to um, film and music? I just I like I like visuals okay. um, that's always been my thing like mm-hmm. I really like I remember the 90s and watching music videos it's kind of a dying thing as far as BT and MTV and all that type of stuff. Yeah. Um, but I remember watching those videos all the time. Mm-hmm. And so I've always been interested to see how someone can create a story mm-hmm. uh, around a visual. Uh, I really, I don't really like videos that are just for glitz and glam. Mm-hmm. I like to really like the ones that dive into a narrative mm-hmm. and actually tell a story. A lot of times I'll either know the song or I watch the video the first time through and then the second time, third time I watch it with no sound. Right. Okay. So then it's all about the visuals. Mm-hmm. I just really like to hone into the visuals. Um, I watch a film or two a day. Right. That's just kind of that's my break and that's also like my research. Yeah. Cause that's, it's just I just find it fascinating how um, people can cut and, and do certain things as far as like with visuals and yeah. just the art behind the visual. Um, so that's really, that's what excites me right now. Uh, okay. I still, like I said, still do enjoy styling, but yeah. like if I could do, I, I want to be able to do it all. Oh, right. Like if I can come on direct style. Yeah, yeah, that would be <laughs> your <laughs> that's, that's that's world. Want. <laughs> so what inspires you as a creative director, um, stylist, what inspires you? Um, for the most part is normal everyday people mm-hmm. uh, and social issues. Um, I guess I'll jump forward here for a second. I think I used to want to be the biggest stylist and be okay. the biggest person in the game. Um, now I really like to use my work to, right. to tell a story or to push across a narrative or okay. tell what I want to speak on or mm-hmm. be it political, social. Uh, I think that's really what I use my work for now is mm-hmm. kind of a platform to say what I want to say and to be seen the way that I want to be seen mm-hmm. rather than being the biggest dog and being the one on top. Uh, so that's very it's very much so what I, I try to do uh, it may be what's going on in politics and maybe yeah. what's going on socially um, for example uh, in Ghana we just shot in the largest e dump in the world and it's right in the middle of uh, a slump where people actually live 
wow. and they burn the electronics and a lot of people are getting sick wow. off of these electronics yeah. and there's a lot of different organizations that are in there trying to work to clean it up and so what we ended up doing is doing a pop-up there and then making it giving all the proceeds back to uh pure oh, which is a organization yeah. based in new york mm -hmm. so that was that was my way of like right. not just coming in and doing something fashion right you know wow. it was like actually let's how can we make a change how can you invoke change mm -hmm. through your work um i think a lot of times people get caught up in the glitz and glam yeah. and like whether it be private placement and placing mm -hmm. these brands that really don't care about the people um when it can really come down to using independent designers and like actually lifting up the people and empowering the people. Yeah. That's really, that's what I find fascinating. That's what I like to do the most. Mm -hmm. um, so I find a lot of my inspiration comes from just everyday life and normal people, um, film of course, mm -hmm. but I don't really pay attention to what many of, many other people, excuse me, are doing. Yeah. Like I know and I'm aware, but like it doesn't really push me to do what everyone else is doing. Mm -hmm. you don't really stand out you're not really having your own voice if you're yeah. all talking on the same frequency yeah no of course and and talking about standing out um you know how is it being a black man in <laughs> the fashion industry the music industry you know what's that experience like? um music industry is pretty easy okay uh, you know like we we are the starters yeah. of that you know mm -hmm. um fashion industry is a little tougher right i definitely find it hard being a straight black man in the mm -hmm. fashion industry um almost as hard as being a black man in america right uh, to a certain extent wow. just because there's so many politics uh especially if you're a man you're expected mm -hmm. to be gay right if you're black they already find you as a threat they, they find you as a savage yeah. or uh, rough around the edges mm -hmm. i guess mm -hmm. so it's, it's more so building and breaking down the stereotypes and showing people that we aren't that yeah. and that we are something else and we are of substance and we can be docile, we can be professional. Yeah. We can, and we, we know just as much, mm -hmm. like if not more. Um, so I think it's just really just proving yourself. Mm. And I think a lot of times you're already pitted against obstacles that you have to jump over yeah. before you even get a chance. And so, you're truly talented like yeah. once you get that chance you have the opportunity to actually show how good you are like I think some of that diminishes a little bit mm -hmm. but then you also run into situations where you can't kind of overcome them yeah um, and you kind of just have to find your own route um, mm -hmm. that's that's really it's tough it's just it's not the easiest thing mm -hmm. but I think everything also has its advantages yeah because I am black I can easily of move course. around with a lot of the musicians that I work with yeah. a lot of the athletes that I work with um, because I am straight, I can move around with those guys as well because yeah. we're more like boys. Yeah, like, you yeah. know what I mean? In any sense, like, a lot of my clients, we are friends okay. like before we even work together. Yeah. Um, so I like to build that rapport and like make you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. I want to meet your parents. I want to come oh, over for dinner. Yeah. Like, I don't want to just have a business relationship yeah. with you mm -hmm. um, because a lot of this business is trust. Mm -hmm. And like, if they don't feel comfortable around you, they're not going to be willing to, to take your direction mm -hmm. and, and trust you to put them in clothes. They, yeah. They may be a little apprehensive, you know. So it's it's a lot about building up trust and just really showing that you're capable. Um, I don't really try to think about the black thing yeah. too much, you know. Most of the time that it comes to my attention is because someone else brings well, it to my okay. attention. Yeah. Um, I try to look over just because... We can sit here and point the finger and yeah. talk about black and white all day, but that doesn't really get you anywhere. Of course. I mean, it already sounds like you're, you know, redefining the perception of what it means to be a black man in uh, the fashion industry through just your approach in terms of, you know, making your clients feel really at ease and comfortable. It's rare that you hear those types of um, stories or you know, you see people sort of taking those efforts to do that. So, I mean, what else do you hope to um, achieve? What sort of impact do you hope and aspire to have with your work and what you do? I want to change the world. Um, but I think, I think I can backtrack a little bit, back to a little bit of that question before. I think I get a lot of that from my father. Mm. Like, my dad is, like, the dopest man I've ever met in my life. Like, you know, he's raised four kids. Wow. He goes to work every day. Mm -hmm. He's never complained. Know, he's always been there and so I think he's made he's my role model for what a black man is yeah like regardless of what field you're in you know he gets his hands dirty every day mm -hmm. you know um 
So I think that's more so like where I get that drive from. Right. I, it's not so much to prove like that I'm the best black man or that I'm a man in fashion. Mm -hmm. I want to show that I'm a man, right. I'm a good man, period. Mm -hmm. you know, that's like really my focus. Um, and I think that's really like the end goal for me is like, yeah. I, I want to be a good father. I want to be a good husband. I want to be a good person. Yeah. Like that's the most important thing for me when mm -hmm. I wake up every mm -hmm. morning is to be a good person. Yeah. And of course we all have moments where yeah, we, we may course. lose our cool when mm -hmm. something may not be the best thing. We may not, we may act out of character, Yeah. but like my, my main focus is to be a good person and to do right by others, mm -hmm. be a professional, be respectful, you know, and really handle my business. Right. Um, especially with how I handle my business all by myself. I, I handle all my bookings. I right. handle my entire company. It's, it's really just being able to stand on your own two feet mm -hmm. and being professional and handle it in, in the right manner. Because I don't think a lot of people can really do that yeah. and handle that. They, they crumble under their pressure and they lose their cool and it all goes left when mm -hmm. you can really just take your time and really focus on being a good person and everything will come back to you in due time. It may not seem like it at that moment. Yeah. But if you slow down and you concentrate on being a good person, everything will work out. Mm. You touched on um, some of the challenges, um, you know, that I guess you've had to navigate through and, you know, kind of that continues reminding yourself that, you know, it's about waking up and being a good person. What are some of those challenges and obstacles that you've had to sort of overcome and navigate through? Ooh, um, specifically in fashion, mm -hmm. um, especially with a lot of my clients because they are black. Right. Um, they're, they're deemed not my target market. Right. So it's, it's very hard to go through PR and to get pools and those type of routes. So a lot of times you have to go to independent designers okay. who maybe most of the time look like me right. so that they actually understand that these are people as well. Mm -hmm. um, and also like the world's changing. There's not really a target demographic. You look at brands like Balenciaga and Dior mm -hmm. Jimmy, like they actually are making very urban yeah. designs. So yeah. like, what really is your target market? Yeah. Or are you just feeding me BS? Yeah. Because you don't want you don't want to give me clothes. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing that I, I absolutely hate about mm -hmm. the process of setting up a shoot is dealing with PR. Right. There's always a chess it's always a chess game. Yeah. Um, yeah, granted you get you get your good friends and you get your, your good connections, but even them they can't come through all the time because mm -hmm. they have someone they have to answer to. Yeah. So that's 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 probably one of the biggest ones that mm -hmm. I have to find a way to navigate on a daily basis yeah. is just dealing with that and um, yeah, just yeah, I guess it goes back to race again. It's just it's sad, but yeah. um, a lot of them don't think that you're that talented mm. because you haven't maybe gone to fashion school or you yeah. don't have the credentials, you know. Whereas like a lot of us, we're very, we're very talented right. and we we know what we're doing. Mm. And but it takes someone to trust you enough to sit down and have that conversation with you for them to actually yeah. know what you can do and allow you to open up your mouth. But a lot of times it's all about that piece of paper. And of if course. that piece of paper doesn't check the, yeah. the right box, you're not getting in the door. That's it. That's it. Now, looking back on your journey so far, is there anything that you would change or do differently? Um, I think I would be more patient. Okay. Uh, I think as a creative, like, of course, money's not always there. And so there's always this pressure that you have to pay bills. Mm. You know, uh, when I got out of college, I went to LA for a year, then I went to Miami for a year, and then I went back to Atlanta for a year. And it was like, bad business or disrespect so once yeah. that's in in the frame i'm done yeah whereas sometimes i guess some people tolerate stuff a little bit more mm -hmm. uh, but i have a very low tolerance for that so i think if i could teach myself one thing and something that i try to focus and practice on a lot is mm -hmm. patience um, from all aspects like just be patient um because seven years in the game i think that i should be further than i am right yeah. now you know and as much as I say I don't pay attention to what's going on, there's younger kids that are doing far yeah. far better than me. That's that's subjective. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and it's just been patient. Everything comes at its own time. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's probably my my biggest thing that I'm trying to teach myself. And I wish that I would have had a little bit more when I was younger. Okay. So in 20 years time, if we were to sit, sit back down here, <laughs> what would you have achieved? Right now? 20 years time. Uh, Ooh, that's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> uh, 
I really want to have a full blown production and creative agency. Um, be it we can handle PR, music production, mm -hmm. film production, video shoots, uh, film shoots, everything from the top end. Um, that's really where I see myself mm -hmm. and even possibly having a brand. Uh, I can sew a little bit. Yeah. Not, <laughs> not, not, <laughs> but um, that's, I, I really want, I really just want to be a full blown creative mogul. Mm -hmm. Like I want to be able to, if I can't do it, I have the connections and I have the contacts to put someone else in place. Um, I'm very, I'm very big on sharing the wealth. So mm -hmm. if I have an opportunity, I, I turn to the people that I know yeah. and the people that I deal with um, just because I think that's, that's how people really should move. Yeah. Keep it in your circle. That's how that's how most people move.